Now during fine grinding, the key to getting a perfect reflective surface is knowing when to change to a smaller grit size. And the way you do that is you check for pits. You'll never get there if you rush it and you don't want to take too much time so you have to have some idea what you're looking for on the surface of your mirror as it's progressing through its stages of rough grinding onto fine grinding and knowing when it's time to start polishing. So let's take a look at uh, some methods of finding pits. Okay, so here's the surface of the mirror. Uh, we're going to be inspecting for some pits. Anytime you change from a larger to smaller grit size while grinding, fine grinding, coarse grinding, rough grinding, you always want to check for pits and make sure that all the pits left over from the previous grit size is, size is gone. And that's when you know you'll uh, be ready to move on. Now here's the surface of the mirror under magnification. This is uh, after fine grinding with 320 grit. You can tell the scale to this pointer I have, it's a uh, sewing needle, tip of a sewing needle, so it's pretty small. And I have light coming at it from above, which doesn't really help when searching for uh, pits. You want to you wanna illuminate it from the back side, so let's do that with a flashlight here. And there, you get a better idea of what a pit is. Now, let's find one, a good one. That right there is a pit left over from the previous grit size. Now these pits should be pretty much evenly covering the mirror blank. They start uh, disappearing from the center gradually and and out to the edge finally and once you got them all from the edge you should uh, be ready to move on to the next grit size. But sometimes it's dis difficult to find especially when it's this tiny. Large pits are easy. These tiny pits are definitely. And you can tell a pit light reflects off of it because it's a chip out of the mirror and uh, light reflects off of it so, if it moves, obviously it's not a pit. But, once I'm done with this grit, it should all look like this in-between zone, in-between here. And then I know it's ready to move on. Let me scan over this. So you can see the various pits. I still have a while to go on this, on this size. There's a, there's a big one there. Some of these I would mark to remember to look in the same spot. These big ones like that, to remember to look in the same spot uh, after the next wet. Now to keep track of the larger pits uh, and to make sure you're looking at the same ones between grinds to see the, your progress, uh, I usually mark it on the side of the disc of the mirror and I will put an arrow or a marker showing how deep into towards the center the pit is so I can roughly locate it and you can see progress on that instead of finding new pits every single time and I put on this one 2.3 so that's 2.3 inches in towards the center and I should find the pit and if I can't find it anymore then it's gone and I'm progressing good and I've done that all over the edge of this mirror just to keep track of mit, uh, pits, mits, pits during the, the grinding process. Another way to check for uh, surface issues or, or overall pit issues is to uh, get down at a glancing angle towards some sort of light Preferably incandescent, but I'm using a fluorescent here because I can't I don't have incandescent lights uh, But you get down at an angle So you see the reflection of the light and there should be a smooth transition 
across the entire disc. Now you can tell slight differences when you have more pits than, uh, than, than uh, other areas because the, the area, the zones with pits will, won't be as reflective. Uh, this is pretty good actually. I can, I don't see much changes in the light at that glancing angle. You can do this in the sunlight and any type of light. It really doesn't matter. I was just trying to get, see if I could see the effect on this video camera. But that's a, that's a good way to uh, see how your uh, mirror is progressing, the surface of it. Okay, so when you're inspecting for pits, it only requires a few uh, simple tools. I use a couple loops to get a magnification. Uh, these are just a couple cheap loops from your local hardware store. Uh, and the beauty of these cheap little plastic loops is you can stack them on top of each other to get higher magnification. It works really well. I've also made some uh, standards. And by what I, what I mean by standards are something I can compare the surface of the mirror to, to a known surface. So what I did was I got some of my uh, sil silicone carbide or whatever grid I'm using and I've etched the tops of these little glass tiles. So now under a loop I can compare this surface with the surface of my mirror to see if to see what are pits, to see what are scratches, to see what to compare the two against this known standard. And I've labeled a couple of them and I've even used little pieces of glass like this for some of them. But it comes in really handy when you don't know what you're really looking at you can go back and uh, check your standard and make sure what you're looking at really is a pit and not just uh, something else. Now I've labeled them this one 6090 that's when I was hogging it out uh, 120 silicone carbide 240 and, and higher but this is just a suggestion. It's not necessary, but it is it is very handy to have something like this while you are uh, progressing.